Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. It is Mike here once again. How the devil are you? I hope you are all well and I find you all sort of chilling, relaxing, um, with a nice cup of tea and you're gonna have a little little watch of my little chat. Um, or maybe you're watching this whilst you're getting ready for work or something or on the tube. Maybe you're on the tube. Now I've said tube too many times and it sounds strange. Tube. We don't have a tube in South Wales. We barely have trains. True story. Um, yes, so maybe I, I hope, come with me on this journey in through this video. Um, today, this video is uh, my what's been on the tally box in April 2019. There has been some bloody good tally in April. I, I know you know what I'm talking about. Um, and then there's been some sort of mediocre telly, and then there's been some, um, frankly disappointing telly. But, before we go any further, guys, I'd like to ask you to head on over to my channel and go and hit on the old subscribe button. Boop, boop! Uh, you will get videos from me every Tuesday and Friday, in theory, but if you don't get them for a week, bear with, because I'm moving house. And if you don't know, I'll link some videos for you around the place um, about what's going on in my life. And we'll talk about the telly in this video, shall we? Um, hit on the subscribe, hit on the notifications, and you'll get to know when these videos go up. And um, hit like on this video if you enjoy it. And now, I think we should talk about what tally I watched in April 2019. Now then, here's my phone. Let's grab my phone because, oh, I'm plugged in. Let's unplug, shall we? Shall we be Mike unplugged today? I think we shall. Um, <laughs> April has been quite an interesting uh, little little viewing, um, viewing month. Uh, I'm going to start by talking about Okay, I, I don't know. Where, I don't know where to start this month because I watched a few things. Um, some of these things I've binged a series. Some have been on kind of once a week. Um, I'm gonna do the binges first. Yeah, let's do that. The first thing that I binged this month actually was Nigellissima. Yes, I purchased it on Amazon Prime because I'm a huge Nigella fan. In case you didn't already know, where have you been? What rock have you been hiding under? I love me a bit of Nigella Lawson. I love food and cooking. I'm a big, big fan of baking. Um, there are videos, I'll link some. And I bought Nigellissima on Amazon Prime because it was quite cheap and I wanted to watch them again. It's been a long time. And I know that I will watch them again and again and again and again. So I knew it was a, a reasonable purchase for me. Um, I love Nigella. I, I will say Nigellissima is a book that I've not really used. Um, it's, I, I, I can't tell you why, or when I watched the programme when it was first broadcast, it, um, it was nice, it was fine, it just didn't kind of, didn't grab me, and I didn't want to rush into the kitchen and make anything, but, second viewing, I feel completely different. I really enjoyed it. I think it might be a bit of an underrated uh, one, a bit of a hidden gem. There were some fantastic recipes for things I wanted to make. Um, I'm gonna try and remember some of them now. The coffee ice cream, just yes, that sounds like right up my street. Um, she made this really nice pasta dish where she kind of blitzed um, I think it was like olives and chili and capers and oil and things and pine nuts and a little mini pro processor and um, some herbs and things and garlic and what have you. And it was like a cold sauce that she just blitzed together, um, cooked the pasta, a little bit of pasta water in there, blitzed it up again onto pasta and ate. And it just sounded really nice, quite strong, quite kind of strong flavours, but very Italian. And I, I fancied that. Um, I also really fancied something. It was it was so simple that she made, but she browned off some um, uh, ham, a uh, pancetta possibly, I think it was, you know, the little kind of cubes of um, pork. <laughs> and they got really crispy uh, and she in some garlic oil and then she threw in some frozen peas and cooked it and then with the pasta again and put the pasta in and had, had it was like ha pea and ham pasta. And I love pea and ham soup, so that is going straight on my list of things to make. So yeah, a bunch of things. Quite quite simple, a lot of them. Um, but um, I really enjoyed watching it. Um, yeah, it was it was quite an entertaining experience. I just really enjoyed it, and I binged it really quickly. There's only six episodes, and it was a fiver. So real, I really enjoyed that. Um, the other thing I binged 
was, okay, this is random, but I have gone back a few years. I, I think, you know, I've been watching Fringe. If you've watched these videos and if you haven't watched Fringe before, it's sort of the X-Files, but uh, with science and sort of... Um, uh, physically, kind of chemically altering humans to be able to do things. And um, uh, we have binged, we finished off season two, which um, is a brilliant season, I have to say. Um, the characters really kind of developed their relationship. You learned a lot about the backstory of the uh, two of the main characters, well, three, the three of them really. Um, and the end of the season um, takes you to a whole different place where we kind of felt like it was going, and we and and I'm surprised, kind of surprised still that it had the the balls to go there, and it went there, and it's about parallel worlds, fringe. If you haven't, if you Google it, that's what it's going to tell you. And we go to a parallel world at the end of the season, and that was brill. We waited ages for it, and it finally did it. And then season three. Um, which we also watched in its entirety in this month, um, jumps between our world and the parallel world. And that was... I, I loved it. I flipping loved it. The story in season three, um, maybe like the last four or five episodes, um, it, it, it kind of it goes somewhere else in terms of storytelling, but the, the bulk part of that season was fantastic and probably... Probably its best season of storytelling, really, of kind of quite complicated. Because if you didn't watch it, if you don't, if you didn't, if you just if you just happen to like stumble across an episode, quite a big sort of previously on had to be on there if you'd understand what was happening because you were jumping from parallel world to there to sort of happened in the past. I mean, Fringe was very clever storytelling. You had episodes set in the future. You had episodes set over in this world, in this world, back in the past. Um, it, and you were piecing this big puzzle together over the whole time. Um, complex TV, but in, in very clever, good TV. Um, season 3 was, was a prime example of that. It was jumping back and forth. And I'm just... I, I love a story set in a parallel world. I'm obsessed with it. I don't know why. Just always have found them extremely fascinating. Um, yeah. Um, Doctor Who, Buffy, you know, all these shows do parallel world stories and it was just brill. Um, season, that was season three. And then we went straight on to season four and completely blitzed that as well. And season four, I think I only watched on original transmission. I haven't seen it since then. So I couldn't remember anything from it. Uh, and um, whilst I did still enjoy it, it was a bit of a slower season. They did this thing where they um, erased one of the characters from the timeline and started a whole new timeline without that character. Um, I, I can see why the writers would have decided to do it because it would have been uh, interesting to change. It, they, you need to change a TV show, per, I think, per season to keep it interesting for the viewers. But also, you know, there's a balance between changing it too much, and I think they changed it too much. I don't think the shift in timeline made for for, for the best type of storytelling, because you then had these characters having to build their relationships again, and we've just spent three years watching them build their relationship, and then to give them all, take the character away, and have them all have to start again just seemed a bit... I don't know, it took it took about 18 episodes of the season for them to get back to where they were originally in terms of um, their relationships, and I, I, I didn't think that that added to anything. There's a standout episode, though, called, I think it's called Letters in Transit. I could have made that completely up. Towards the end of season four, where we jump into the future, and there's a fantastic, like, dystopian future episode, which which, which eventually did become... Um, what season five is about, and we haven't started season five yet. And again, I haven't wa watched it since transmission, and I cannot wait to watch it. It's it's we're gonna start it tonight, I think. It was just oh no, I can't watch it tonight. It's Game of Thrones. Okay, let's talk about that then, shall we? There are so there's a bunch of TV shows that I'm watching that are currently on. Um, I let's just okay, we're gonna go Game of Thrones now. I wasn't going to. I was gonna say that to the end, but we're going now. Okay, so let's. I mean, I'm gonna let's just let's just summarize Game of Thrones so far because there is another video about Game of Thrones coming your way about the first three episodes. I'll link it. Um, in general, this season so far, I fall on the side of love. I am loving this season so far. The first three episodes of Game of Thrones. Um, I'll talk about it in depth in my other video, but. I did feel ever so slightly disappointed with episode three. Guys, I did. The Darkness, you know what I'm talking about. Um, 
I think it just marred a lot of it for me. I think I was struggling to see what was happening and then I was so focused on kind of that negative feeling. I was on a bit of a negative spiral and I think I was just like, come on, I can't see what's happening. And then when you could see then, you were like, oh, I can finally see. And then things started happening and it was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Anyway, I, do you know what? Game of Thrones rant is on another video. I'm going to link it above and below and you can watch that about that. Let's move on from Game of Thrones. I'm just, I'm going to speak about it again because I feel the need to. Oh, let's talk about Star Trek Discovery. It finished this month. I finally caught up. Season two, it was banging. It was bloody banging. I mean, if you like sci-fi and you're not watching Star Trek Discovery, you should be. It is it's been just, season one was so good, season two was so good. There's quite an epic cliffhanger in a way, but also a way for them now to tell a very different story because of where they've gone. I'm not going to spoil it, but um, I love the emotional endings for the characters. I love the special effects. It's like watching a film every week. They must be plowing so much money into it. Um, and all science fiction deserves that, I think, now, because we're in such a place where um, TV programs and storytelling, the level is up here, it's so high, and Star Trek, Star Trek Discovery is just up here every week. There hasn't been a dud, I've just loved all of it. Um, and I just, the characters are great, the music is great, and I'm not a Trekkie at all, but I, I think this show is turning me into one, and I cannot wait to see where they go with season three, genuinely can't wait, because... The possibilities now are so, so exciting. Genuinely, I'm very excited about it. Loved it. Really, really loved it. Want to watch them all again, but not right now because there's so much else going on. Um, and I think that, that I was watching it and enjoying it so much that I wanted to watch some sort of nostalgic sci-fi. So for me, nostalgic sci-fi. And that can only mean Stargate. Now, does anybody else on here, did any of you guys watch Stargate? Whether that be the film from 1994, I think it was. What a film. Um, the the TV show SG-1, which came afterwards, then the spin-off Stargate Atlantis, and then the spin-off Stargate Universe. Guys, Stargate is a massive, massive franchise for MGM, and I genuinely miss it. I mean, does anybody, does anybody else watch it, or do you used to watch it? What did you like? What didn't you like? I want to know. Um, I was just so happy to find Stargate Atlantis was available to uh, on Amazon Prime. And I have Amazon Prime, and I thought, I'm gonna have to watch this. It's been years, and I, I'm enjoying Trek so much. Um, put SGA on, and suddenly found myself halfway through season one without even realizing I'd watched so much. Um, Stargate Atlantis, if you don't know what it's about, it's, um, oh, it's hard to describe. The Stargate is a big circle that dial that connects worlds, and um, they were explorers. The American military uh, uh, are exploring the universe. Um, Stargate Atlantis is a spin-off from Stargate SG-1, and Atlantis ran for five seasons. It was in the Pegasus galaxy, and they had this horrible, horrible, fantastic villainous race called the Wraith, and the Wraith feed on humans. Um, so it's a little bit darker than SG-1, and that's a good thing. Um, and I watched season one this month, and just loved every moment. Stargate Atlantis season one, I think, is probably one of its better seasons as a whole. Um, it's just this learning of this new world, new um, city of Atlantis, um, new villains, new allies, just new everything, and it just, it really stands up by itself. And I don't think I have watched it by itself. I think I've always watched it as part of, like, you know, you watch um, SG-1 at 8 and Atlantis at 9, or whatever it was, or they were on consecutive nights, so you'd kind of, you get both of them, and I think I always watched it with the other, so, oh, my screen's gone off, let me just give it a little, there we go. Um, but watching Atlantis by itself. I mean, I, I, I think if you didn't watch Stargate, you're going to be a bit lost. I will say that. It isn't, it, as the season goes on and you get to learn the characters, then, then you're much, you feel included much better. But um, as I think you'd need to have some background knowledge of Stargate because it's mentioned a lot and there are characters that kind of cross over. But the first season is fantastic, a fantastic story, and I really enjoyed my rewatch. Um, so I'm moving on to season two now which is very exciting. But that's for next month. Um, and we cannot talk about April Tally and not talk about Line of Duty Season 5. 
Is anybody else watching it? It's on BBC One, and the best way I can describe it if you don't watch it is it's about a section of the police that are investigating the corrupt police officers in, in the police. In, in the UK. And AC12, Anti-Corruption 12, are the unit that we've been following for the last five seasons. Um, longer than five years, though it's been on for a while, because I think they take big gaps in between um, seasons. Um, every series has had a different sort of lead character, which sounds mad, but kind of like a star of the year. And that star is the police officer that finds itself, himself or herself, in a potentially corrupt position. It was hard. Um, and then we follow AC12. They are the team people that are in every season and they are investigating the potential um, crime that's been committed and the covering up or whatever it is. And every year so far there's been a kind of a star of the year and that person has been, has gone through a whole story and their story finishes at the end of that season. Um, so if you like a bit of crime at nine, a bit of thriller, a bit of police detective programs, you should be watching it. If you aren't, I don't know where you've been, but you should definitely watch it. I think they're all on Netflix. I think I think they are. Well, they'll certainly be on iPlayer. Um, and season five, it's come back. You know, last year the creators did Bodyguard, which was a runaway success for the BBC. And this year it's all about uh, Line of Duty season five. And so, I mean, the whole thing has been on now. So as a whole, um, I have very much enjoyed it. I don't think it was better than last season. I think season four was really, really, really good. And it was my favorite. Um, but season five was a bit of a different story and it was less about that one corrupt police officer or potentially corrupt police officer, because it isn't always the case. Um, uh, less about them and being caught it was more of a big build-up setup of the people in AC12 uh, and kind of like it was being built up as the people in AC12 are actually the corrupt ones and that was it was a very different kind of story a bit more complicated a lot of talk online about being it being hard to understand because of the all the different abbreviations my sister couldn't understand it and she's not alone there were loads of people that didn't understand that first episode I did follow it but I was having to concentrate and I think it did become a bit more um, a bit simpler as they went on and the finale was on last night and it was fab it was very very tense very emotional they brought in this new character who was um, another um, head of an anti-corruption unit, anti-corruption three, and she was bloody brilliant. I loved her. I really wanted her to come back, uh, despite her motives. Um, but I'm not going to tell you about what happened because spoilers. Um, but yeah, Line of Duty has been very, very thrilling and excellent, excellent police drama, BBC, and made by BBC Wales. I'll have you know. So there we go. And I think let me just check my little list on my phone. My phone's doing a thing. It's not uh, flipping back up. It's not turning. It's turned. Um, that is what I've watched this in April, guys. Um, what have you guys been watching? Uh, do you watch any of those things? Or based on those things that I've watched, do you have any recommendations of things I'd like to watch? Let me know in the comments below. Um, and thank you very much for watching. I will speak to you all very, very soon. Bye, guys.